Okay, thank you very much for coming to the session, which we're going to talk about testing and you know how our Killian and Docker can help you to write tests, and obviously how to can help you on uh, writing tests for microservices. My name is uh, Alex Soto. I'm the Arclean Cube lead. I work as a software engineer in CloudBiz, and you can follow me on Twitter. If you have any question or whatever, you can ping me on Twitter. And also, my GitHub is Lord of the Jars. So, uh, yeah, containers is that thing that has existed for a long, long time, and now it's in the past two years, it's becoming a trending thing. and you know, every, everybody who can puts containers on productions and who can't uses, for example, testing or, or for playing or for uh, running in the pre-production environments. But uh, anybody here doesn't know what is Docker or how it works Docker? Yeah, you don't know what is Docker, okay. Uh, Docker is in a an application container engine in the sense that uh, it takes, it creates a, a, a container which, it, which is when you put all the, your processes and you know all your files and so on inside this container, like you know like this container that goes with the ships, and it starts in a safe environment at top of a Linux kernel. So you have a safe environment there where you can do whatever you want, and yes, as any process, you can kill it, start it, and so on. So uh, the way how we built uh, a Docker image is like Docker pool, you put, you get an image, a name of the image, and then the, the image is, you know, is downloaded from the your Docker repositories, and this is an image. Then we, we can also uh, create a Docker image with a Docker file. Which Docker file is a f it's, you know it's a file to build your custom um, Docker container, or even if you want, you can say that you can use Docker Compose, which instead of creating one container with Docker Compose, what you're doing is creating more than one container. So this is a sample of a Docker file. The from keyword is for saying uh, in which image it's based. Then we run for creating a directory, we move to the directory, we copy from the local hard disk, the index.html to a uh, user source app. Also, we are exposing the um, port 8082. And then, as you can see here, it, this is, I think, that is the shorter, shorter and lightest uh, HTTP server that you have ever seen in your life. It's, it's going to be <laughs> simple, you know, it's only one line of code. And this is an HTTP server, which you know returns the index.html. And then, when you want to build the image, you simply do a Docker build. You create a tag in this case, and then you uh, you know you run that container, and you have the server up and running. Let me show you in a uh, quick way. The first thing that uh, I'm doing is creating the image, which is everything is cached because, you know, to save time. And then we run. And yeah, this is our, you know, service running in Docker. Uh, yeah, I would say that it takes more time on, you know, uh, transforming this image to base64 and pasting inside the HTML rather than, you know, creating the server. So, yeah. This is now. Uh, mm. Oh, no. So, my name is uh, Ashta Knutsen, and I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm the Archelian project lead. How many here know about Archelian from before? Hands up. How many have used it? Okay, so not too many. So we'll start out by going through some of the basics of it. So have a short introduction to what Archelian, uh, or what we know to be Archelian now, w what that is. 
So Archelian is not per se a testing framework. It's a, um, it's a middleware for your tests, so to speak. We're not trying to compete with JUnit and TestNG and all of those types of things. We're more integrating with all of them. There's a lot of tools out there for testing already. What Archelian tries to do is to kind of combine those all into a coherent story around um, integration testing, essentially. So from the Archelian point of view, when you, when you uh, start to run a test, the first thing you have to do is some way of selecting what kind of environment that you want this test to run in. And traditionally, that has been any form of application server, typically Wildfly or JBoss or Glassfish and so on. And whether or not that container is on your local machine or if it's uh, on a server somewhere else or in the cloud, Archelian doesn't really matter and it knows how to communicate with the different type of containers. Then as Archelian startup, it will connect or start up that server for you. So that's kind of the first step that happens. Then it will need to, you need to provide the environment that this is going to run within. And at that point, uh, there's a, a phase within Archelian that's the packaging phase, where you define your Java classes, your resources, your XML files, and all of that into a deployment of some sort. And Archelian will then forward that and deploy it to the, to the environment or to the container. And then it moves the execution from your normal, normal JUnit to inside the container. So at that point, when your test method actually executes, you have access to all the resources that are available within the containers. So you can inject live objects like CDI beans or EGBs, uh, connection factories, um, um, message queues, and so on, and use them as if you were a, a normal deployed application. <coughs> And the next step is, of course, to verify that this test runs and r report back to the normal um, testing framework chain, essentially. So it doesn't matter whether you or not you're running your JUnit, uh, in this case, uh, in, a, in Eclipse or through Surefire. The reporting will happen in the same fashion, and Surefire or JUnit doesn't really know the difference. <coughs> and then, of course, there's a certain cleanup and undeploy and stop the server and that kind of thing. So as far as the example go, so this is a fairly basic JUnit based test. The first thing you have to do is to use the JUnit uh, integration point with the run with, with run with Archelian the class, telling JUnit to hand over all the um, logic of how to run this test to Archelian. When uh, then Archelian starts up, it will be looking for that deployment method. That's where you define what type of environment this is going to be. So this is um, where you can either define a Java archive, you can do a web archive, you can do a generic archive of some sort, uh, enterprise archives, and all of those different types, and build it up as you like to define this target environment. And then when the tests are executed, potentially in the remote container, you can inject, or using any of the uh, existing component models uh, injection points, in this case using the add inject spec, but you could just as well use at resource or at each B, and then inject the live objects back into your, uh, your test case. And then as far as the test method goes, you're just asserting on a, on a normal, normal, um, normal, um, um, normal object, essentially. So the, uh, libraries that are used to create the deployment methods. It's a, it's a library called Shrinkwrap. So you can add classes, packages, uh, files and folders, and resolve libraries from um, Maven Central and all those type of things to, to build up these type of packages. And then there's the opposite side of the in-container testing, which is the default mode. But of course, certain cases you want to test the external endpoints as well. So you want to test an HTML page, or you want to test a JAXRS endpoint, for instance, or remote EGB, or what, what have you. Then you define the deployment to be testable false, and then Archelian just deploys that thing, and the test itself will execute on the, the client side, uh, that being either in Eclipse or in Surefire, depending on how you run it. And, well, this example, we're simply just 
asserting some state on a um, CXRS endpoint. Since Arcadian is in control over the container and the deployment, you can also inject back things like the, um, the URL to where this application was deployed. So you don't have to hard code in some properties file, are we now running on the staging environment or in the, uh, or in the test server. Ar Arcadian will give you that information based on what it knows about the container and the deployment. So we just released the first alpha of what we call the Archelian universe bombs, with the bill of materials, essentially just a palm file that defines everything all of all the extensions that are available in a coherent and uh, unified way, essentially. So start off with defining the Archelian universe palm file as part of dependency management, and you import it, and then you, you just add something org Archelian universe and then the module name, being Archelian JUnit, Archelian TestNG, Archelian Spock, Archelian uh, Cucumber, um, or Drone and Graphene, or any of the other type of extensions that are there. And it, as we were saying before, it needs some form of container, so in this case we're going to use the Chameleon container, which is a kind of wrapper container for all of the other containers to simplify the user class path, essentially, where all the dependencies are loaded dynamically. So we're going to have a look at just how to essentially just run those demos that we had, or the, the source code that you saw on the slides. So we have here defined, in our Killian XML, just to find that there's one container here, and using the chameleon, we're going to say that this is going to be a Wildfly 9 nine container, and it's going to be in managed mode, so meaning Archelion will download the artifact or the um, container distribution and start it up as part of the, the test life cycle. So the first test we're going to do uh, is an in-container test. And since it's seamlessly, more or less, integrated with the, um, the JUnit experience, or JUnit, experience, the J JUnit framework, uh, when you're in the IDE, you can simply just do a run as JUnit test. And probably a bit hard to see in the logs per se, oh, too bad. It's essentially starting up the server and executing the tests. And we have a green bar, of course. And similarly, this was the in-container version of it, and the, uh, the uh, client-side version of it mentioned before, just the add the testable false and the test case will now actually run inside the same VM. And again, when you run it, it will start up the server and deploy and undeploy as it goes. And green bar. So that's the essence of Archelian as we know it. So it's, it's, <coughs> it's built to be portable in the sense that when we saw the example code, there was nothing there in the test code itself that said anything about what kind of container this was going to run on, if it was going to be running on a, a glassfish or a wildfly. So all of that information is ex extracted out and left up to the co configuration, essentially. So you can easily swap between what type of implementations that you want to test your code on. It's intended to be executed from wherever you want. so. You don't have to go through the whole build phase, for instance, in Maven to get some artifact to deploy. You can s sit in your IDE and just do run. And based on the IDE support for incremental compilation, for instance, you, you will have all the updated sources as you go along. And Archelion is built to be flexible and extensible as a very wide extension model to support any type of testing services uh, and integration with other um, frameworks. So w there's support for Selenium, there's support for um, Persistence, uh, for DBUnit, and a bunch of these type of testing frameworks that already exist, but then bundle into the Archelian way of doing things and then allowing you to do this, these um, frameworks in container, for instance. So as far as being extensible, we're going to look at one of these extensions today. So I'm going to give you back to Alex. No, thanks. Well, uh, yeah, now this is <coughs> one extension, which is Archelian Cube, which, as Alex says, is an extension of Archelian. 
And we, the Archelian community, thought that uh, and in the past, or as you have seen in the Archelian core, what we are doing is, you know, take writing a test and before they execute it, start at the server, deploy their application, deploy the test, execute the test, and then stop the and deploy the application and stop the server. And we thought that it does was a really nice feature, but we could do it even better. And it was like, if there is Docker, we can start Docker. Docker will start the application server. We are going to deploy there our application or our test. We are going to execute the test. And then we are going to stop the Docker container. So, you know, it's, it seems pretty natural, this uh, a step. And this is exactly what is Archelian Cube. It's a, an extension which manages the life cycle of the Docker containers. So when you execute your test, Archelian Cube automatically start the, you know, the container or containers that you have defined as a requirement for your tests. Then, you know, it executes the test and finally it stops that the containers. Um, it's it's in, uh, interesting to, to see that in, in the previous examples, well, well Wildfly was started, we used the managed uh, uh, mode, which means that our client will uh, start the um, container and then uh, stop the container. But in case of Cube, since uh, the, the, you know, the application service is started automatically in Docker, you, you don't need to, to make our client to start anything. You, it, the only thing that you need to do is connect to that container and, and the application server that is inside the container. And this is what we are doing in Cube. Also, as I, as I said, um, you can use um, container or containers. I mean that you can define one container and run your test or define the container where you're going to run the test and all the containers that are required by your application, for example, a um, mail server, a database, uh, a GMSQ, or whatever you need, it will start uh, all of them, and then you will execute the test against those uh, containers. But also, uh, the, the one thing that we, we face it is that with the new uh, trends of microservices where sometimes you don't use an application server, we need also to give support for these uh, scenarios. And Archean Cube also can be used f with Drop wizard uh, and a Spring Boot application, which is not, I mean, that Spring Boot that it's not converted to a WAR file, I mean, that in a jar file, uh, Netty, uh, Node, and um, Verdex, or, you know, um, any kind of application that can run inside a Docker container. So, um, to run, um, this is a, an example of, of how to run um, Wildfly. In a, you know, in, a, in a Docker file. So you put here the, the image, you add the users. Um, so because if you, if you want to deploy something to uh, Wildfly, you need to provide the user a password to, to deploy that file. So you need to add the users. And finally, um, we start the Wildfly. And this is how um, Archelian Cube test looks like. Notice that there is nothing new. I mean that you, you're not seeing anything related with Cube or with Docker. The only thing that maybe you are seeing here is that using da data set annotation, this is uh, another extension of, of Archelian, which is Archelian persistence extension, which helps you, you know, to maintain the data of your databases in a known state. And basically what this test does is that every time that shelf should find a strongest beer is executed, before its execution, it populates your database with the beers.yml file. After that, executes the test, and when the, and when the test it's, you know, it's finished, it cleans your database. This is what this annotation is doing. But notice that from the point of view of Docker, you see nothing strange. But of course, we need to add the dependency on the class path, and to add the dependency to the class path, it's, you know, in this case, it's, we are using Maven, but it, it, it just works with Gradle as well. We use the Archean Cube Docker, which is the, the artifact name of Cube. Of course, if you want to use the persistence extension, you need also to add the artifact to have this using data set. Uh, notation, which is well, Archelian persistence 
artifact ID. And of course, you still need to provide uh, uh, a chameleon uh, dependency to be able to de deploy your, you know, your WAR file to the remote server. And finally, and this is where all the magic happens. It's a, a file called archillion.xml. We have already seen this file. And basically what you do here is saying that um, you are defining an extension with qualifier Docker. Notice that in this case, we, we are setting a, an optional uh, parameter, which is machine name. If you are using Docker machine, you need to provide a name. So this is the attribute you use for setting which Docker machine you want to use. And since we are we have a tight integration with Docker machine, it means that you can use any driver that it's provided by Docker machine. So for example, in our case, we have some tests that are executed to digital ocean infrastructure. And it's a simple matter of putting, of creating a Docker machine pointing toward digital ocean account and putting here the name of the digital ocean machine. And then of course, I've said that um, you can you, you need to, to, to provide which uh, Docker image you want to run. And in this case, you're saying that you want to run one Docker image with name Wildfly. You said that the Docker file that we have seen before, so it builds a new image. And finally, of course, you need to set the port binding. And in this case, we are redirecting the 8081 to 8080 for the, you know, the HTTP connections and 9991 to 9990, which is for, uh, this is the port for deploying your application from outside. And yeah, of course, you still need to define the container. In this case, it's a Wildfly, as we said. And notice that now in the um, Chameleon target, at the end, it's remote. We, just, we are saying that, please don't stop I don't start and stop a container, but it's already started. Then, um, let's see this example. Notice that now what we are going to do is um, defining here we have. The Wildfly, it's going to uh, start Wildfly, it's going to start uh, MySQL, and it's going to run the test. So in this case, we are going to start two containers. And the test is the one that we have seen. Hmm. That is this one. Yeah. Yes. So now I run as you know as a JUnit test. Notice that uh, here at the bottom, uh, I sorry on the top of the right of the of the Eclipse, you see that the container Wi-Fi is started, and now uh, let me check. Okay, the text error executed. And uh, this test is taking some more time. And that's all. Notice that now there is no uh, container running because, you know, our client has taken care of starting and stopping and deploying everything. So that was a single test that was, uh, sorry, not a single test. That was a single Docker container that was running a Wildfly server and we were deploying into it. Uh, but when you're using, you probably need m more than one thing. So we were using the internal a H2 database. But of course, uh, Cube supports some form of or orchestration as well. Uh, essentially meaning multiple Docker containers that are linked together in some form of from fashion and um, Cube will know which containers are linked and be able to start them in the correct order, for instance, and s start them in parallel if possible. So in the next example, we're going to see 
essentially the same setup, but instead of using the, the internal database, we're going to use an external MySQL database instead. And so we're just adding more uh, container definitions essentially downwards. So we're one of them is going to be the wildfly image, and the other one is going to be the MySQL database. Uh, interesting with this setup, you can start to kind of mix and match. So maybe you want to try this application against MySQL 5 or MySQL 5.5 or 6 or other type of, type of databases if your application has a need to support multiple types of, um, of, um, of servers. And looking at that format that we had there, it looks, f for those of you who, who might know the Docker Compose format, it looks fairly similar. Uh, the reason why we're by default not using Docker Compose is because this was created before Docker Compose was released, essentially. But in the, the latest versions, you might as well define, just say that, say that the definition format is going to be Compose, and then you can use your normal Docker Compose uh, S s style of defining these uh, instead. In some future version, this will probably be the, be the, be the default. So let's have a look at that one. Uh, so that's, as we said, essentially the same test, but now we're going to use a remote server instead. No, oh, sorry, <laughs> two servers instead. Uh, so just as easily as well, there's nothing in this file defining uh, or in the test class, defining which type of containers that we're going to run against, and as usual, we just do run as JUnit test. And looking at the Docker server, we should see the MySQL server being started, and then the Wildfly server being started. Then, of course, the Wildfly server is using the MySQL database for for its um, data access tests. <coughs> and there we go, green bars. And of course, they will just do the opposite from the start order and start shutting the servers down again. And the only thing we really did was to add one more s server there and link those two together and then we're done. Yeah, uh, now you have seen all the examples using an application server, in this case Wildfly, but I said in, in the start of the, the session that with a Killian Cube you can still um, write uh, tests using, for example, Spring Boot or Bedex or Node.js, I mean that something that it's not deployed inside an application server. Uh, this name is quite confusing because, yeah, you know that, that at the end the code is go going to run inside a Docker container, but the containerless thing comes because, uh, you know, the application servers are composed by containers, so since there is no application server, then it's uh, that, that container containerless thing. Yeah, it's quite confusing, let's say, it. but yeah, we're going to go uh, deep uh, in the at the end of the of the session. So basically, what the containerless thing let you do is uh, that any application that is deployed and runs on Docker, it doesn't matter if it's in C, in JavaScript, or in Go, or you know, or a Spring Boot jar thing, it can work. <laughs> and yeah, you can see some examples here: Drop Wizard, Netty, Node. Uh, Node.js, Spring Boot, Barex, or for example, also the new Wildfly Swarm, it also can run with the containerless uh, thing. So what you need to do is adding a new dependency, which is uh, our client give containerless. This is, a, for example, um, an example of Node.js application, which is uh, yeah, it's using Express and you know, it's, it's an uh, REST endpoint where you go, when you go to be your strongest, that returns this uh, JSON file. It's quite simple, but enough for showing you uh, how it works. And, yeah, and then it listens to uh, 8580 port. Of course, uh, our client is writing in Java, so you still need to use one JVM language 
for writing tests. So although you are using JavaScript on your, let's say, uh, business side, your test side still needs to be on Java. So now instead of creating a, um, you know, a jar file or a, or a WAR file using Swimwrap, what you're creating is a generic archive. Basically, it's a, it's a tar file. Where you, you, as you can see here, you add the app.js and also the uh, package.json. And notice that you are giving here a name, which is the strongest beer and microservice.tar. And that's all. Notice that since you are not deploying anything inside the container, you, it's, it has no sense that you test something inside the container. You should run uh, an, as a client. So in this case, I'm, I'm getting the URL. Notice that this URL is the URL of the Docker host plus the, plus the port. So it, our client does all these transformations for you. And then you, given the base URI, you go to the beer strongest and you assert that this is the strongest one. Of course, uh, I've said, if you can see here, we are creating a generated archive, which is a tar file, and this tar file should be put inside the container. And to do this, what we, you need to do is create a Dockerfile template, that it's like a Dockerfile, it is exactly the same, but notice that here it is the deploy deployable file name. This is a, you know, it's a, a placeholder that it's uh, replace it at runtime with the file that you have created in with a stream wrap. So in this case, when we execute, when our cube executes the um, Docker build, it will replace deployable file name with the location of the file name the file name you have created on your test. Put it inside the container and you know run the uh, npm uh, application. And yeah, this is how you define um, a containerless application. So I have here the, this demo, which is what you have seen, the, uh, no, the, the um, Node.js application. You can see the code. I think that it's, it's in resources. Uh, no, no, sorry. It's um, source test. Yes, it's here. So as you can see, this is a, uh, well, it's a JavaScript thing. And now, mm, I have here the test, and I can run it again. Yep. Mm. Uh, not now. And again, well, I have the script here. Notice that uh, an NPM application is running now it's you know deploying everything mm -hmm. and you no know, green uh, test and you know you have been able to use or Killian test any program or application that is running inside uh, docker So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know if you have any question. Of, oh, okay. Then, uh, one thing that is going to come in the next version, or, you know, the next version of Archelian that it's already implemented in upstream is the container object pattern. I'm sure that uh, anyone here doesn't know what is page object pattern. Yeah, everybody. Okay, you can think of container object pattern as, as a page object pattern, but instead of for browsers, for containers. So basically, you know, it encapsulates all the logic of the container inside a class, like operations that you can perform to that container or the configuration of that container. For example, the exposed ports, the um, the port binding, the the host or the Docker host where that container is running, and so on. And this mm, ap approach uh, gives you, you know, um, the, the, the capability of creating tests with a single responsibility. Your test is a test, and uh, you know, on the Docker management is the Docker management. It isn't separated in different classes. 
And also it, it gives you the, the way of reusing um, the, the, the Docker instances in Java because you, uh, the end container object is, um, is a Java class with, with all the configuration of that container. So you can take this class, move it to another project, and you know you have exactly the same. Uh, a typical uh, example of this could be, for example, a mail server. I'm sure that everyone here that deploys some that deploys an application will need a mail server to send emails. So you will have some kind of uh, gateway classes for sending emails. And if you want to uh, test these classes, obviously you need a mail server. So one way to do this is creating your container object, which represents a mail server, which runs inside Docker, of course, and then you simply need to use kube to uh, instantiate this um, uh, this object, and kube will take care for you to uh, start in this mail server, run the tests, and then stop the mail server. To do it, it's just you know you, you need to uh, use um, kube docker the. the your, the, this artifact and also the JUnit standalone because it has no sense that if you want to you know, test something that is like a mail server connection or um, SSH connection or so on having nothing to deploy there. So here is an example of a ping pong. It's, it's a Docker container which basically you send something and they, it, it returns OK. And the first thing that you need to see and it's very important is that the ping pong container is inside a jar file. It means that you, you can have your common library of containers and inside a jar. So every, every time that your um, test requires a container, you can get this jar and you will have this ping pong container class inside. So you don't need to you know, uh, create one and one and one and one and one for all your tests or all your applications. You can have your library of Docker containers. Then notice that it's a simple class that you annotate it with cube. The value is the name of the image. And the pore binding is, you know, the, the pore binding thing of Docker from, uh, from the host where you're running the test and the Docker host. Then uh, one of the things that you can do is um, use the host IP, uh, annotate a, a string with host IP, and then you get access to the uh, Docker host uh, IP, of course. Another thing that you can do is define a Docker file to create this uh, container. And in this case, you take a public static method, which returns an archive, you know, it with cube Docker file. And you can use the, this descriptor, which is a Docker descriptor. And notice that you're doing per in a programmatic way, creating a Docker file. In this case, it's from the image and export as a string. And then you simply, uh, you know, uh, adds this Docker file content inside the Docker file file. Uh, there is other approaches to use. For example, uh, you can uh, instead of using cube Docker file in a static in a public static method, you can use cube Docker file in, uh, in as a parameter of the uh, of the class. I mean here as with cube and setting the location of a Docker file. So instead of defining the Docker file programmatically, you can point directly to a real Docker file. And finally, this ping pong container returns the URL where you need to connect to do the ping pong. And this is a test. Notice that it's a test which you an, uh, annotate your uh, attribute with cube annotation. And when our client cube uh, starts the test and see that one attribute is annotated with cube, it will uh, start that container then it will execute the show return OK as Pong in this case. And when the test is executed, it stops the container. So yeah, this is a very simple example. But think about that you can create your, um, in this case, mail uh, container, your GMS queue container, your, if you are using microservices and you have service A that calls service B, you can have your service B container. And when you want to write a test, of the, the service A talks with service B, you only need to you know use this uh, object. I mean that it's you know that it's an infinite ways of working with this, but the, the 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 key point is that you can create your library to be reused everywhere. And of course, uh, if you're using a Docker machine, you need to put the machine that you're going to run, and 
that's all. You don't need any other property. And um, we can see here this ping pong example. This is the container as we have seen, which contains the cube and the host IP and so on, returns the URL. And this is the this is the test. Did it? Why it's not? This is a test where you, you know, annotate your ping pong container with cube, and that's all. Now I can run this test as usually as as a JUnit test. Now the yeah, it's pretty fast because it's you know it's a ping pong only, and uh, I, I can execute it again. But I guess you have seen that the container has been created. Yeah, we need to go fast, but you will see here that this is a line. Yeah, this is the container, and and then it just stops with you know six seconds in this case. Was so that was what's currently in Cube now, and Cube is becoming Archelian's um, Docker foundation for some uh, of some sort. Uh, while the current implementation supports the Docker machine and the Docker Compose format and the Docker server, there's a lot of other um, infrastructures essentially that also starts to su support the same type of type of images and building uh, these images. So. In the last alpha, there is some um, simple support for Kubernetes and OpenShift 3, which essentially allows you to build these images using the OpenShift infrastructure or de deploy them on a Kubernetes um, um, server farm, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this will probably also expand to have support for doing the same, but, it, but then again, Coro Coro S and also Mesos and M M Marathon. Uh, the next version of Cube is most likely going to be the 1.0 final, and in that regards, uh, we mentioned the weirdly named containerless container, and we need to change that name somehow. Uh, so the the idea here is, if any of you guys have any idea what the hell we're going to call this thing. That makes sense. Um, tweet us about it, and the I don't know the best four suggestions or something will get access to the, to the new Archelian in action book that Alex is writing with Jason Porter, and we'll do the re release notes and so on w with thanks to all of you. So the containerless container, the premise of what that's trying to be is. A container that doesn't have a container in it, in the sense of an application server container. Um, I'm not sure how even to explain it, but hence the bad naming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's quite yeah because it's strange because you know you have Docker container, <laughs> but you're not using the con Java container, let's say. So yeah, it's quite it's like use your I imagination. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you think that, I mean, it can be. Anything related with uh, Star Trek or, or the space or I don't know. You know, <laughs> uh, it's true that in, in Orkilian in general, uh, everything is more or less related with something in the in the space, in some ways. Right. I mean, Orkilian. For those of you who don't know it, it's from the from the Man in Black m movie. It's the little um, alien race that sits inside this other guy's uh, body, essentially. And controls him, and that's kind of what Archelian is supposed to do. He's in in the middle of your test case and controls the containers and all of that. So that's this is generally a space theme on the whole thing. We have the Archelian drone, which is the Selenium in integration. We have Archelian graphene, which is a drone that's added padding to it to be stronger, which is an, an add-on to Selenium. We have the cube, which is kind of Semi spacey. Um, yeah, it's the you know that the, s the spaceship of Borgs. It's uh, it's called Cube. Right. So, so yeah. Tweet away if anyone <laughs> has anything. <laughs> uh, so the next steps, as far as um, if you want to know more about Archelian, there's uh, the main 
website, arclean.org, has a lot of guides and uh, lists all different modules and that kind of thing that are, that are available. Um, so check that out. And if you want to kind of join the, pro the project and see what's going on, there's discuss.arclean.org, which is our, our um, developer forums, essentially. And uh, any questions in general, by the way, at this point? Everything's clear? I'm yes? Well, uh, thanks for your job. It's so good. Uh, just when we try to experiment uh, Arcanium, uh, many of our teams found it is uh, very complicated to put in place. Uh, are, aren't you afraid that uh, adding so many layers, it try it's, uh, it's not to be hard? Where is the bug inside the test? To be confident with test, uh, at which layer the bug will appear? Docker, Archelian, dependencies, code? Is it, is it easy to deal with uh, all these stacks? So, so, <laughs> so the question is, due to many extensions, is it hard to figure out what goes wrong if something goes wrong? Um, hasn't been a particularly big problem so far uh, as far as I mean sure there, there has been bugs I'm not saying that but it has been particularly difficult to figure out who to blame essentially or which extension does it wrong uh, but yeah I mean m most of the extensions try to kind of just help you pr provide some kind of service so they're not trying to fiddle too much with how your tests actually run so at, at least hopefully yeah. Yeah. Ah. Also, uh, ah. so no. Also, you can, for <coughs> example, in case of of cube, uh, we have added a lot of log uh, lines, so you can enable the log. Uh, you can use uh, log for J or or any wrapper that you want to use, and you will see a lot of. Uh, in you put in the bug, you will see a lot of all the events that is happening. To say, I'm I'm reading this configuration field. I am starting this container. This container has been started and it's returned this. And even if you put in trace, you will see. Also, what what is the JSON that we are sending to the Docker host? So, uh, in some ways, you can, you if you are not you're not sure if you are doing, uh, I mean that if your your container is correct or not, you can take the JSONs you are sending and you know trying in in your local machine. I mean without cube uh, and see if it works or not. I mean that it's, I mean, yeah, uh, maybe you need you need to start to to you know to to um, execute some manual steps and some uh, investigations of where is the problem because you need to test these things. But I, I mean that we, we you, you have the, the the tools to to do it. No. Um, what's the best way to co combine a building with the BDD frameworks? Um, yeah. What's the best way to use our killing with BDD frameworks? So um, there is a. Uh, project called Cukes in Space, which is essentially the Archelian uh, integration for Cucumber. Uh, that's probably the easiest and most complete at this point. Um, there was some effort to get JBehave up and running in the same fashion, but it's kind of died off a bit, I believe. No. Uh, also, you, you can use uh, Serenity BDD if you want, and there is a, um, a, a JUnit rule that you put the JUnit rule in a Serenity BDD test, and you can, you know, you can use Serenity BDD, which at the same time means that you can use Cucumber or JBehave. And uh, with this rule, you it calls all the magic of Archelian, and you can use it for deploying your WAR file for executing BDD. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's generally what we have. So. Thank you for coming. Thank you.